Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm going to talk about the Pirate Bay for Windows. And I'm going to talk about like end user stuff to begin with and then developer specifics afterwards to keep the video more friendly for end users. I'm getting more views and comments from end users than I anticipated, so I'm going to try to make it better for them. So let's start off with this button up here. This will take you to the piratebay.com. It'll load search result pages according to what you have in the search uh, search text box here. Otherwise, it will just load the home page. So you just type in, type in whatever here and hit the search button or enter and you'll get search results. And it's much more intuitive in this UI here than it is on the site. There's no advertisements and it's laid out really nicely. Down here it's going to display pages 1 out of 34. I can't seem to get any more than 34 results. I think that's how it is. And um, let's take a look at the preview here. So let's take a look. It's pretty good at finding the appropriate name and looking it up on YouTube. So let's click on the preview button and preview Odd Thomas. So it's going to open up a preview page of Odd Thomas in YouTube. Well, it's going to look for a trailer. And this is Odd Thomas. So if you don't like the look of the page there, you can check View Embedded Previews. And that will make the preview embedded so that it's kind of like more fulsome. And let's do the hammer here. Here's the hammer trailer. This one you can actually play in HD it's only like and in full screen. Well, you can do them both in full screen. So this is nice because you can have this maximized in a second monitor or whatever, and it's not going to move if you keep it open. So we can go back to Odd Thomas, and I'll load it in the same location, and this is 40 same thing. You can exit this and do intersections. It's going to open it up in the same location still. So it's pretty convenient that way. Then you have the magnet links here. So you're going to download magnets and it'll utilize your BitTorrent client to download the magnet. If you can't seem to download the magnets property properly, then get uTorrent and update it. So Let's take a look at um, something else here. Let's go into settings. So you can adjust your sort mode. By default, the sort mode will be most seated. And you can change it to default. I think default is the most relevant torrents according to the search term. I'm not so sure. It's pretty vague. And then you've got your filter. You can filter by category. So we can filter uh, games here. And now we got our games. I'm going to tur uh, turn the subcategories back on. And we can uncheck exclude pornos. And then you'll start getting like a half a page of pornos per when you're searching for DVDs, unfortunately, with the Pirate Bay. So that's why I have that on there. It's pretty useful. The timeout value will allow you to specify a time that the application will have to connect or download search results. So this is good for me because sometimes it doesn't load at all. It will take forever and it's just better to time out and then try it again. So we can change the timeout to like two and it's a bad example because it's actually loading pretty fast but I'll change it to one. Okay, apparently it's loading within one second. Okay, there we go. So it just timed out, and now I can try to research it again in a way that it's going to load in a second. So we can change this back up to four seconds. And if you want to use a proxy, you can. So you can use the proxy that you set through Internet Explorer or a custom proxy. And I don't know why I had a proxy on there. I don't really have a proxy defined in Internet Explorer, so it probably was just uh, no proxy at the time. 
I don't know if I mentioned this, but you can display your previews in um, embedded view or the actual page for the preview just by checking view embedded previews. Okay, so if you wish to navigate to the next page, you can just hit this next button and you can hit the previous button to go back. Um, it'll cache the next and previous uh, pages if they're available in the background so that when you want to go navigate to them it's pretty instant. Apparently I only have two oh, um, filtering games. Sorry. So let's take a look at this context menu here. So we can right click on something and we can copy the movie name so that we can go into our browser and then paste it into Google search or whatever you want to do with it. And it's pretty good at finding the, uh, the actual name of the movie if it's a movie or a game. We can also hit search this and it will put it in the search box and then search it. And we also have the ability to go to a Rotten, Rotten Tomatoes to check out ratings if you like to do that. Personally, I just watch the trailers and look for like killing and stuff. So with Rotten Tomatoes, if you search a name and the name is, there's only one result found, it automatically navigates to that result. And uh, that's what happened here. Now we have an option to go to the torrent page to actually check out some stuff. And I'm not sure, I don't remember if I mentioned this, but here are your comments to validate information about the files and stuff because people always post if there's a fake or not. And then your description, preview, file count, info hash. And I also forgot whether or not I talked about the magnet link here. So you download the magnets, the magnet versions of whatever. Um, they're not torrents anymore in the Pirate Bay from what I can tell. They're magnets. Pretty much the same thing with, I don't know, some improvements or something. I, I really don't know. But there's your. that's how you download them. And um, basically, if it doesn't seem to work for you, you're going to have to get uTorrent make sure it's up to date because I do utilize the uTorrent to download the magnet okay let's try to use a proxy so it says I can use for an example that I used before I can use um, 198 50 241 160 8089 so let's try that 198 50, 264, nope, I forgot, 241, 160, 8089, so this is useful for people who have blocked mirrors, I, I need to get this tested though, so this specific proxy is pretty fast, this is the only one that I can really get to work consistently. And if you get no results, then you're going to get this giant label saying no results yielded. Okay, now on to developer specifics. So initially, I started using the HTML agility pack and try to get used to that. But you have to learn a new syntax. Oh, well, not a new syntax, um, but you have to learn XPath to effectively use it. I think it was called XPath. And you really got to know the, the entire library, uh, the library or whatever. Otherwise, it's not going to be very effective and your code's not really going to make any sense. Um, and I just decided to use 
regex because I had to use regex for most of the stuff anyways. I only used a little bit of the HTML agility pack. Um, typically you should use, I recommend using just regex if you're good at it. Uh, regex will allow you to keep uh, keep everything very flexible so if minor changes to the web page is made you'll still be able to uh, parse it properly and yeah I did I have written my regex patterns to uh, ad adapt as well as it can to the changes in the website that's the problem with parsing HTML content it's, your programs pretty well subdued to the subdue subdue to the um, which am I call it the actual page? Yeah, subdue. So the problem that I initially had when I started this is that the HTML content was different um, in my application than it was when Mozilla Firefox was navigating to the web page, and it's simply because Mozilla Firefox, as it was sending. Um, user agent header that I needed to send otherwise the HTML content is can be significantly different and I keep track of the headers with this extension to Mozilla Firefox here live HTTP headers and I can see what headers that Mo Mozilla is sending I only really used one and that's the user agent header and yes I do use Mozilla Firefox to inspect elements it has a much better element inspector than Google Chrome. That's why I'm sending the same header. So I decided to alternate colors here with the torrents, the torrent displays, simply to contrast the different torrents, make them easier to distinguish and read. And I have the size and the, the categories here they were initially black. I made them gray because they were upstaging the uh, title here in the center. I'm going to make the titles as readable as possible. It's kind of what the point of the program. Uh, in a lot of torrent titles, there were periods for some reason. A lot of people are still using periods for everything, even though everybody has modern computers that can have spaces and file names and stuff. And so I replaced the periods in the titles using regular expressions. Um, I'm basically finding any period that doesn't seem to be a period for a file extension and replacing them with a space. So you got the MP .mp3 down here. I initially tried to download um, the magnets within the application and send the actual file to the default BitTorrent client, but um, I was having a hard time decoding the stream or something. Uh, simply my torrent downloading function that I used before with uh, with KAT browser, I couldn't get that to work with the magnets, and I uh, had a quite a bit of trouble with that. So I init so what I've done is I've done something very simple that actually works. Um, go to the P PB API here, go into helpers. This is how I download the magnets here. And uh, once I get the magnet link, I send it into here, and it opens it up in the default BitTorrent client. Oh, the, by the way, the PP API here, it's very easy to use. It's very simple. So you create, so I'm not going to document it, by the way, I'm too lazy. I have to, I have to get shit done. But here is the search params. You create PB search params, and that is just an easy way of constructing a URL uh, for search results, because you have to, you have to um, construct a URL to search. And uh, that's basically what that does just does it in a nice way and then you pass the search params into PB search and PB search will yield a PB result page and then um, the PB result page will yield a list of torrents or an array of torrents if it has search results and then the torrents will have extended torrent info and web path is like just for combining web paths because um, the path.combine only works on you know Windows paths with the backslash so that's why I made this it's something similar and then I've got this make string URL safe it just um, 
makes you know because uh, I am you're you're typing in search terms in a text box it's user input you have to make that URL safe so this basically does stuff like replaces spaces with uh, the plus sign and all that jazz it's pretty useful and here's the PB web client and I created this so that I can globally apply um, a proxy to all the instances of a web a certain web client as well as specify a uh, timeout value so you can't use the timeout property of the web client I'm pretty sure it's the web client that has the property no it's it's the web request so you can't use the timeout value of the web request because this is just for synchronous events and it doesn't really do anything. For instance, I can do this um, request at timeout is equal to one, one millisecond. And it should raise a web exception if this was if this were to work with uh, asynchronous event, it's not gonna do that. Okay, it did time out. There's just a little bug I have. I can't seem to get it to work properly well. It's in the debug, uh, being booted with the debugger attached in release mode. There we go. Yeah, I was just having a hard time connecting, that's all. Um, with these filters here, I'm able to clear all the other checkboxes by hitting the first or checking the first checkbox and uh, and I'm able to clear the first checkbox by checking everything else and that's actually really easy to do but it's still pretty cool I, I contemplated for like five minutes whether or not I should um, use the word filters or the word categories because on the Pirate Bay I do believe it's just categories not really named anything really but filters best describes what's going on with the settings there I initially thought that implementing proxies would be a pain um, it's actually extremely easy with uh, C sharp so I decided to do that for the people who have blocked mirrors people say that they have blocked mirrors and I want to find out exactly what that is so I know what to um, use the proxies for and what not to. Anyhow, I'm going to post this on SourceForge and there'll be a link to that in the description. And you can do whatever with the, the source of the application there.